In this lab, you'll be asked to identify different epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissues based on a list of slides given to you in class. To find tissues, do the following. First, you must find and focus under low power. Once you've found and focused under low power, go ahead and switch to medium power and refocus. Finally, switch to high power and refocus. In order to focus, you'll use the course adjustment knob under low and medium power. When using high power, you may only use the fine adjustment knob. Never use the course adjustment knob under high power. And lastly, all of the pictures that you take for your lab report will be from high power. Let's start with epithelial tissues. The first tissue that you'll be identifying is simple squamous epithelial tissue and it will come from the lung section from slide O. When you look at slide O under low power, you can see that there are a variety of different tissues. The area that you will be looking for for simple squamous epithelial tissue will be this area over here. When looking at this area under high power, we are looking at the alveoli. Alveoli are the tiny little air sacs found within the lungs, and their walls are composed of simple squamous epithelial tissue, as shown here. The next epithelial tissue is simple cuboidal epithelial tissue, and this can be found in the kidney tubules from slide A. When looking at slide A, you want to focus on these tiny little white circles. These are the lumen or passageways of the kidney tubules. Looking at the kidney tubules under high power, you can see the simple cuboidal cells shown here. Together, these cells form the lumen or passageway. Next, we're going to take a look at simple columnar epithelial tissue, which can be found in the jejunum in slide S. The big open white space that you see in the center of the picture is the lumen. It's the passageway for food. The purple area is the area where you will focus in order to find simple columnar epithelial tissue. When we take a closer look at the purple area from the previous slide under high power, we can see the rectangular shaped cells of simple squamous columnar epithelial tissue shown here. Next, we're going to take a look at stratified squamous keratinized epithelial tissue. In order to do that, we're going to look at a cross section of skin from slide N. Again, as you can see, there is a multitude of different tissues on this slide. What we are going to do is we're going to focus on this purple area up here. Under high power, this is what stratified squamous keratinized epithelial tissue looks like. You can see that the cells closest to the connective tissue are cuboidal cells. And as these cuboidal cells undergo mitosis, some of these cuboidal cells are pushed towards the surface. They then fill with a protein called keratin, become squished, and in essence becomes squamous epithelial cells. So the naming of stratified epithelial tissue comes from the name of the cells that is furthest away from the connective tissue. Next, we're going to go back to the lung section from slide O to take a look at pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue. This type of tissue is found lining the air passageways. So in order to identify the location of pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue, look for a big white open space or lumen. Lining this open space or lining this lumen should be pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue. Taking a closer look under high power at the lining of the lumen or the air passageway, we can see pseudostratified ciliated epithelial cells shown here. At the ends of these cells, you can see the cilia, which are hair-like projections that extend from the apical surface of the cell. The function of the cilia is to help transport and move substances across the apical surface. The last epithelial tissue that we will identify is transitional epithelial tissue, which can be found in the bladder on slide C. When searching for transitional epithelial tissue, you want to look for the purple area that is closest to the white area. 
Taking a closer look under high power at transitional epithelial tissues, you can see that the epithelial cells resemble cuboidal cells. These cuboidal cells are on top of one another, in essence giving the appearance of being stratified. So sometimes transitional epithelial tissue can be categorized as stratified cuboidal. We call it transitional epithelial tissue because these cuboidal cells, when stretched, when the bladder becomes distended, changes shape into a squamous cell. So it transitions from being a cuboidal cell to a squamous cell.